the human rights abuses that WikiLeaks has exposed have been phenomenal. You know, these are war crimes. These are innocent women and children being killed. Um, we need to remember this, that the, Julian and WikiLeaks gave us the truth. They gave us something that we wouldn't have had because our governments don't tell us the truth. <laughs> so we, we, to say thank you, we need to stand up and, and support Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Um, we're actually inside DFAT. In, yeah, upstairs. All right, so you know about it. Cool. Thanks. Bye. Hi, Kathy. Who were you ringing? I was ringing the ABC. Oh, cool. I know. We're here to free Julian Assange. Let's free Julian Assange. No That's more lies from DFAT, no more lies from Bob Carr, no more lies from Gillard and Watson. Julian Assange is now being detained in the UK for two years without charge and we've come here to DFAT today to say that we've had enough. Hello, we have a list of documents for Bob Carr, the FOI documents from your department that contradict what he is saying about Julian Assange and the level of knowledge that this government has about his incarceration and US involvement. And these are your documents, not... Sorry? Um, we're not just here to deliver the documents. We've actually come here because we want the Australian government to say clearly to the US government that they must not prosecute Julian Assange because he's a journalist and he shouldn't be prosecuted for publishing what amount to leaked accurate government documents. We've written a lot of letters, we've signed petitions, We've been to rallies, we've asked for a meeting with Bob Carr, which has been denied. So now basically we've come here today to make that demand and we want to basically stay here until we get an agreement. Now you've heard Senator Carr's public statements and clearly I have no further information beyond that. We have no evidence, as far as I know, that the US has is prosecuting Julian Assange, who is currently, as far as I know, still in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Okay. If you, you insist on leaving those documents, I'm um, happy to pass them on to the minister's office, but we can make no statement, we have nothing to say, you can't stay here. This office closes at five o'clock and if you're still here then we'll have to ask the police or building security to escort you from oh. the building. This is happening not just here in Sydney but in Melbourne uh, and we're here to mark the two year anniversary of Julian's arrest and to ask why on earth the Australian government isn't doing anything to support him and to defend WikiLeaks? Um, they plead ignorance to the fact, the documented fact of a grand jury investigation into WikiLeaks. Um, they refuse to ask very sensible questions around the extradition process uh, of Sweden, questions that Ecuador was quite able uh, and willing to ask. Um, and just continue to pretend that it's some sort of matter of due process that simply has to be played out when it's it's not due process it's highly political and they know it so you know the the, the group upstairs is there to, to ask those questions yeah we do intend to stay here um, basically until we get an agreement that the Australian government is going to say in, in no uncertain terms to the government of the United States that they should not prosecute Julian Assange and I know you said that there's no evidence of that but actually um, there's a lot of evidence in DFAT's own documents um, cables which describe the investigation as unprecedented in scale and nature recent documents as well which confirm that the investigation is, is ongoing um, throughout the cables it's reported the evidence of a grand jury is reported as a matter of fact um, and all of it as far as we can tell from these documents and these are government official government documents is that the Australian government has asked to be forewarned of plans to extradite Assange so they've not objected in principle to it they've asked to be forewarned presumably so that they can manage the PR aspects of it and like I said Assange is a journalist he's been kept in the UK for two years without charge um, that's not good enough so what we'd like to do is wait here until we have the Australian government meeting that yeah, demand. Well, it's pointless in the sense that staying here till five o'clock or staying here forever is not going to provoke the sort of response you're looking for. I'm not uh, authorised to nor am I briefed to make a statement so I don't intend this to be taken as a statement. Um, as I said we will undertake to pass on your documents to the Minister's office but really Thank that's you. all I can usefully do.
Okay, well, we'll wait then. Okay, thanks. Are you going to security? Yeah. Okay, perhaps we can have it come in a moment. All the stuff that we've got here is stuff that they know about anyway. Do you know what I mean? Of it's course. A, it's in their own documents or it's on the public record. Mm -hmm. And so they just take this position, oh, we don't know anything about the US plans. So they don't have to actually confront the issue, which is would mean standing up to the US, which is what they don't want to do. It certainly looks that way. I think it's a, an extremely important issue. Um, the fact that we're in a position once again where an Australian citizen is being, his human rights are being uh, violated just because of a political alliance. You know, the, the bottom line is that our politicians are there for us. You know, their allegiance is to Australian citizens, not to a US alliance. If we're a sovereign government, our government should answer our letters. We've been completely ignored by Bob Carr. I've managed to be able to get a reply from Buckingham Palace on concerns. Now, I don't think that Bob Carr is any busier than Buckingham Palace. On our, in our office. So, um, if you find to hold them, wave them, whatever you like, but please don't stick them to our doors or windows. Well, it's only blue tank. Oh, no. Are you going? No, no, no. They said the uh, lifts have been walked off. Yeah, it's 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 part of building policy or something. Yes. Still people coming up and down, but I'm not sure what that means. Yeah. Does that mean that we can't leave? Yeah. There's a clown that will just walk by and said someone tasing it. Really? Oh dear. Police have gone into side deep back through another entry. Yes. So it's like through another side and we've all gone in. Oh, there. So yes. There's another four or five arrived, so that's, yeah. let's say, eight, nine. Right? Yes. <laughs> Christine Assange has said on several occasions that the reaction of power has exposed them more than the cables, and I think that's true. I think there were a lot of people, me included, who um, were still pretty sort of, you know, not particularly radical, um, still kind of thought, yeah, the system we've got is okay, um, just, you know, needs to be tinkered around the edges a bit and yeah, get a few different people in power and everything will be better. But I think the one thing that WikiLeaks has really shown, even if not deliberately, um, is really that in the West, in, the, in Australia and in America and the UK, while we think we all live in liberal democracies, we don't. Because if we did, the rule of law, the presumption of innocence, free speech, all the right to protest, all these things would actually mean something. And the people who are elected to uphold all these values and represent us would do that. But the minute the Cablegate releases began, basically, you saw the reaction from the US and you saw the reaction from our politicians here. You saw the financial blockade of WikiLeaks. Politicians phoning up Amazon, forcing them to take WikiLeaks off their server, uh, calling for Assange to be assassinated, garroted, all, uh, all those things, calling him a terrorist. And while at the same time preaching the values of freedom and democracy to the rest of the world, you know, there was a, Hillary Clinton made a speech about internet freedom in, in China and Iran and how she supports dissidents in those countries, while at the same time her government is trying to shut down WikiLeaks. And so I think that the reaction of these governments has really exposed the reality of the societies that we live in as much as anything WikiLeaks has published. Excuse me, did you say freedom and hypocrisy? I don't know, maybe I did. We expect our government to behave as if Australia is a sovereign state and a democracy. It shouldn't be a big ask, it shouldn't be an ask at all. It should be understood, we shouldn't have to fight our government to be a sovereign state and to have democracy. Okay. No, Otherwise, true. why the hell are we bombing the crap out of countries that we say don't have human rights, don't have democracies? Why do we overthrow governments that are democratic yeah. to put in puppets? Yeah. Afghanistan is a prime example. Iraq is a prime example. Syria. It's a, right across the world. Resources. 
Ten so years. Please. We're in World War Three. We're just doing it one country at a time because that's manageable. And it's not going to get better unless the people of the Western world realise we are not the good guys. We are causing death, destruction and heartache for numerous people right across this planet and we're paying for it. We, we're paying for it, not the government. The government doesn't have money. We, we supply them. So we have a right to make informed decisions. It's a basic human right. It's a basic democratic right and our government is not serving us. That's why we need WikiLeaks. Cathy, you've just come out from the Sydney DFAT office. Uh, what's the atmosphere like up there? Well, it's very tense. We were met with immediate hostility. You've got to leave, go away, we're not going to listen to you. OK, well, give us those papers and we'll pass them on. Some lady behind the counter totally panicked and went running off and obviously called security. Security called the police. The police were there within about 15 minutes and a real display of force. I was there for just under an hour. I've got a lot of nice interviews and chants and beautiful posters, a beautiful collection of posters and very informative, big pile of FOIs, um, proof there that DFAT knows about what's going on and uh, is not letting the public know about it and there's a bit of hypocrisy going on there. At Around uh, one hour, just under one hour, uh, a member of staff, I could not identify, but a member of staff from that floor approached the police and asked the police to taser us. DFAT bastards, DFAT liars, DFAT US guns for hire.